One final day in the Veneto would decide everything at the Giro d'Italia. The penultimate stage, but with the final day of procession in Rome, this stage 20 would be everything to the GC riders. Away from the maritime jewel and old imperial capital that is Venice, riders winding its way past its rivers, climbing its Prosecco hills and scaling mountains with sobering and bloody history. Monte Grappa, a double shot of Grappa and a finish in Bassano del Grappa. Nine times in the history of the Giro d'Italia the race have visited here, with Coppi and Merckx among the past winners. Tadej Pogacar led the Giro d'Italia by almost eight minutes, GC realistically done and dusted, and he'd signalled his intention to want to win this stage. That meant it would be play your cards right to get in the breakaway and really hope. Less chance of going to the finish, but that didn't deter the early attacks. Pietro Bon and Steinhauser were giving it a go. Fernandez trying, Sanchez there again. Ballerini up there with Germani. It took 30 Ks roughly for that break to develop. Conchi, Janssens, Mubrahan, Vendrame, already a stage when a 24 hours previous were in it. Turns as well, and eventually 11 riders would take four minutes with UAE Emirates quick to control. Towards the first ascent of two of Monte Grappa, riders were already starting to lose contact. Behind Miguel Biel and Vega Stockelingen were already starting to work too, as many said goodbye to the peloton. It was a hard stage, ridden again at warp speed. UAE more than halving the gap on the first ascent. Even seasoned pros like Pozzo Vivo were fighting to hold the wheels, everybody desperate to hold their GC places. Near the top, Giulio Pellizzari attacked to take the maximum mountain points. He wasn't able to mathematically win the King of the Mountains competition. That two will go to Pogaccia. However, he was able to make sure he'd be wearing the blue jersey on the final day in Rome. One by one, they were chased down. Vendrame, the next to come back. A long descent towards the next ascent, saw Sanchez and Pelizzari out there. Pelizzari will be joined by a teammate to ride on the flat for a couple of kilometers. That will be Alessandro Tonelli. Sanchez, stage winner already at this Giro, left behind by the youngest rider in the race. And going on to the final climb, he had two and a half minutes on a hungry, chasing UAE team. They were hoping to produce a sixth stage win for Bogaccia at the race. Could he pull it off? Pelizzari, the young hope, still pulling out time, and Pogaccia was asking for the pace to be increased. That until it got down to less than a minute. Thomas already in a little bit of trouble here. O'Connor as well. Tiberi, Rubio and Martinez were able to follow. Marca was continuing to set the pace, and then that was that. 36 kilometers remained when Tadej Pogacar took off. Five and a half Ks from the top, and then a long descent to the finish. He closed the gap, Around 40 seconds when he went very, very quickly, and he soon pulled half a minute out in the chasers. Gaps were developing behind between the GC contenders. Gerard Thomas had two minutes 25 of a buffer on the likes of Tiberi to stay on the podium. And Pogacar just increasing his lead in the general classification ahead and about to go into a superb position where he could take another stage. Pelizzari briefly had on his wheel. But Pogaccio would be all alone over the final summit, the last of the Giro Giants conquered by the main man from Slovenia. Valentin Pache-Bantre was doing a great job for Ben O'Connor, and Geraint Thomas was helping to save his own place in third spot as well. Only 15 to 20 seconds or so able to be taken by the likes of Pelizzari, Martinez, Tiberi and Rubio. The crowds were magnificent out there. The noise was elevated. The entertainment yet again high octane. Bogaccio was putting on yet another show. Descending, not taking any chances and trying to hold that two minute gap he had to those chasers. Tiberi would take the chance to try and attack on the descent, but he wouldn't be able to get ahead. Whereas Thomas along with O'Connor were coming back the Welshman was about to extend his own record as the oldest ever finisher at the Giro d'Italia on the podium. 38 years old on this very day, Martinez put in one final dig 
but he wasn't really going anywhere. A short climb in the middle of the descent, seeing everything come back together again. Two minutes, 10 seconds behind the advancing Pogacar. Monte Grappa had been conquered twice then. And Pogacar, he was on his way to Rome. He just had a few pedal strokes to go. Prettier in pink and knowing this time he won. On the roads of what was the most serene Republic of Venice. Here he was, all alone, as cool and calm as you like. The winner, the entertainer, Pog in pink and perfect. And barring incident or accident on the roads of Rome, today Pogaccia will win the Giro d'Italia by almost 10 minutes. A six-stage win for him in a single Giro. That's more than even Eddie Max. And the last time anybody won six stages in any Grand Tour was 15 years before this, when Mark Cavendish did it at the Tour de France. A second place on the day went to Bachepin. A nice reward for all of his work for Ben O'Connor. Third to Martinez. Thomas coming across the line and securing that podium spot at 38 years of age. All the celebrations for Pogacar. Indeed, take a bow. That was very special for the sixth time at this Giro. Pogacar, Pachepin, Martinez, the top three. Tiberi finishing in fourth. He'll win the white jersey and be the best young rider. Pogacar celebrating on the podium. 9.56, his final margin of victory. 10.24 in front of Thomas. Fourth place, O'Connor. Fifth to Tiberi. And one final processional ride through Rome. Out to the sea at Ostia. Back into town, around the Imperial Forum. In what should be a sprint festival and a chance to crown the winner. The latest Roman emperor, Tadej Pogacar.